Recording in progress. So if we look at the quarter uh, behind uh, us, uh, our income from operations was 28.8 crores. Uh, the total revenue, which now includes interest income, was 30.7 crores. Our EBITDA was 6.6 .6 crores. And we did a net profit of almost 4.8 crores. Uh, this resulted in a net profit margin of 15.6%. Uh, our international services grew 36.9%. We added 11 new customers. Our repeat and recurring revenue was 91.2%. And the team strength uh, was 350. Now, if I look at the H1, uh, you know, they're just adding the last two quarters, but for the sake of completion, uh, our income from operations stood at 55.8 crores. Our total revenue at 59.4 crores. EBITDA at 12.1 crores. Net profit at 8.8 .8 crores. The net profit margin at 14.9. Uh, our international services grew 32.3%. We added 27 new customers during the last, uh, you know, H1. Uh, our repeat and recurring for the two quarters together stood at 94.2, and the team strength has stayed uh, consistent at around 350. If we now look at our performance as percentages, our revenue for the quarter grew 6.9% over the last quarter. Yes, as some of you might be thinking, this indeed is uh, the first time that I recall that our quarter two has been bigger than quarter one uh, for reasons that we have mentioned in our past conversations. But we are not complaining. We are happy that it is so. Uh, it just sets a new benchmark for us, sets a new bar for us for moving forward. Uh, our year-on-year -year growth has been 56.8%. Uh, well, before you ask me, uh, you know, let me also say that some of this increase, uh, why on why, which may appear, uh, uh, you know, non-trivial, uh, is also because maybe in the year before, our quarter two wasn't that good. Uh, but as we keep getting stronger, uh, you know, the, the, the challenges will only uh, become stronger as well, and we are, we are equipping ourselves to get over those. But I think the healthiest thing is that our EBITDA this time now crossed the 20% range that we had been working under. So we went to 21.5%. Our net profit, therefore, jumped to 15.6%. All these numbers have resulted in an EBITDA growth of 18.6% Q on Q and 123.6% Y on Y. The EBIT growth was 19.2% Q on Q and 126% Y on Y. And the net profit growth, Q on Q was 18.6% and Y on Y, it was 118.9. If we look at the half year, the total revenue grew year on year by 39%. The EBITDA stood at 20.5%, net profit at 14.9%. This means an EBITDA growth between the H1 uh, of this year and last year uh, is 72.4%. The EBIT growth is 72.7%. And the net profit has grown 71.7%. This slide gives a view of the percentage of services business that we have had from different regions. Uh, you'll see the numbers are roughly the same. Uh, so it, it shows that we have had consistent push in all geographies. Uh, India was 36.3% in Q2 and for H1 it was 36, 36.3% and for H1 it was 36.2%. US again 42.4 and 42.5. Africa 10.1 and 10.3. 
APAC 7.0 and 7.6, Europe slightly uh, increased, uh, just one odd new customer, 4.2% in Q2 versus 3.4% uh, in, in, in the H1. This graph uh, basically shows how the numbers have moved. Uh, you can study them at your convenience. There isn't much that I have to explain on this. Uh, this again shows the contribution from our customers uh, to our business. Uh, our uh, top five uh, customers contributed 17.3% to the revenue, and our top 10 contributed 28.3. Uh, if you look across the bars, you will see that the number has, you know, stayed roughly the same across quarters. Very, very small difference, which is an indicative of the consistency uh, of the business and the stability of our customer connections, our engagement, uh, and, and the overall business. Um, the number of customer ads, which I mentioned, was 11 of these. Seven are domestic and four international. Uh, and in H1, uh, the total number is 20 domestic and seven international. On this side is a view to some of uh, the key clients. Uh, not all of them have been acquired uh, in the in the in the Q1 or H1, but we we did some significant engagements uh, and projects uh, for these during this period. Even though some of them have been our long-time customers. So this is the number, and uh, the next few slides uh, is what is closer to my heart because that gives the story behind the numbers. <coughs> One of the most important things that uh, I had made a mention of in the last call was that we are working with a prominent financial accounting software companies here in India, uh, moving them to cloud. So the news is that this company is busy. Uh, I think other than uh, uh, Tally, uh, busy is probably the most prominent uh, accounting software, uh, very dominant in the market. So we have been engaged with them and we carried out very stringent, uh, uh, you know, proof of concepts and ultimately they have decided to move gradually to Azure. Uh, we carried out the entire application architecture redesign, which will ensure 99.99% availability of the application. We had to redo the security architecture of the application and again user access, uh, the deployment strategy for scalability. Uh, business continuity and data availability strategy. So as a result of the successful POCs, all the new users on the, the busy accounting software are now being provisioned on Azure. And majority of the existing users are expected to be migrated over a period of next 36 months. Uh, just for information, busy has more than 350,000 active users in the country. And they have a network of 450 channel partners. By moving to Azure, Busy is taking steps to fulfill their mission of to be the most secure accounting packages on the cloud. Uh, most of you might know, but just for information, Busy Accounting is an India Mart company. The momentum on EdTech continues, uh, although the last quarter was largely spent in executing the projects that we had won, but we did get an LOI from a large university in North, uh, you know, uh, but we also made some significant product enhancement during this period. So generative AI uh, using the Azure OpenAI services has now been bundled into the product. And several functionalities of the application are now using generative AI uh, to give the edge to the users. Uh, the phase one of solution has gone live uh, with the American University Antigua and SIUK, and several universities are currently assessing the solution. Uh, that assessment continues to be underway. Uh, we combined our experiences of a couple of projects uh, in the banking and financial services industries and put together this product called Baffins, uh, which is banking and financial industry solution. 
the solution basically uh, enables these organizations uh, you know by enhancing letting them enhance their operational productivity customer satisfaction customer loyalty so for banks while we don't do the core banking we do everything which is around uh, enabling them manage uh, all these functionalities uh, and we have a new customer win there the national bank of kenya uh, has communicated to us uh, that they are they have decided to go with us using this solution uh, i must mention that <clears throat> this is uh, this is currently now uh, in contracting stage uh, but the communication of the win uh, has been made to us formally uh in our last call we had mentioned that we are having uh some opportunity we are working on in the data engineering space uh so one again one of the important projects where we have been communicating uh, recently couple of weeks back that they have chosen to go with us uh, is the zambia electronic clearing house uh, zedi chl uh, so it was again uh, a very tough competition uh, a tendering process Uh, so they have now again communicated to us that they they have chosen to go with us uh and this is also now in a contracting stage uh incidentally zambia electronic clearing house is the uh, largest uh, in zambia uh, an organization which 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 runs a national financial switch which includes the electronic fund transfer and check clearing uh, we are going to build a data warehouse for them uh, and top of it we will do data analytics and visualizations which will include data transformation cleansing harmonization uh, multi dimensional data modeling uh, setting up data governance and access and in the phase 2 we will go with ai and ml uh us as we have been saying is a very key geography for us we continue to push for sales and marketing efforts there uh, as we had mentioned in our last call uh we hired a head for our uh, canadian operations who you can see in this picture uh on my on my on my right side there is our colleague from dallas uh so we recently participated in a pretty large uh, conference and exhibition there in the us uh and and our commitment to that region and uh, push for building up that region uh will will continue uh, over the next couple of years uh the good news is that microsoft is growing as well uh, you know they recently released their numbers for q1 uh, the intelligent cloud business has grown 19% the azure has grown 24% and the dynamics 365 grew 28% uh, these numbers are the largest uh, in the industry so microsoft momentum continues uh, we are leveraging that but obviously we have our own uh, initiative as well through our industry solutions our ip uh, and our geographic spread uh, and uh, we we will continue to build on that momentum uh this slide is what we saw yesterday so this has not changed what's ahead of us the urgency for business to embrace digital transformation will continue uh, the demand for businesses for intelligent data platforms is going to continue uh modernization of applications is going to continue uh if the acceptance of azure is increasing and getting strengthened further uh most of the custom applications are now being built on low code no code platform where we are doing a significant amount of work uh and then our geographic spread is going to be a strategy that we are going to leverage uh you know for our growth and for for continuity of business uh the remaining slides you have all seen so i will just shuffle through them uh in case you have any questions you can stop me else at the end i, I have not made any changes here everything is what you have seen before these lectures are just statutory documents uh nothing new there i So shall we proceed to Q and A then? Yes, exactly. So I will stop the presentation here and open the floor for conversation. Thank you, sir. Anybody who wishes to ask a question, please use the option of raise hand. In case you are unable to do that, please drop a message on chat, and we'll invite you to ask your questions. Uh, 
Uh, Ame, you can go ahead, please. Ame Pilpangar. And by the way, anybody asking a question, it will be great if you also subscribe uh -huh. on your video. Uh, you know, that gives me a feel of talking to you. Absolutely. Am I audible? Yes, am I? Absolutely. Thank Hi. you so much, uh, Ajay sir, for meeting you again. Uh, congratulations for a really good set of numbers. Uh, just wanted to, you know, get some information from you uh, about the acquisition that we had planned. Uh, I know that you are in not, not in rush. Uh, I'm also aware that you want to do this right. Uh, so you don't want investors to push you. Uh, but just wanted to understand your perspective on where you are since we last spoke about it. That's it, sir. Thank you. So, you know, uh, the push continues from our side. We have uh, been evaluating, I think during this period, we evaluated five, six companies since we spoke last. Uh, there are at least two with whom, uh, you know, we have moved to a, a second or you may say a third level of conversation. Uh, you know, uh, where it will go, I cannot say. Uh, but this is a very uh, important and key initiative for us. We will continue uh, pushing this, and I personally spend a significant amount of my time on this. By and the way, uh, at least one of them is a at least one of them is a U.S. company. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, another one is an Indian company, uh, but with business in U.S. and India both. Okay. So, is this still in uh, the U.S. markets? Because you last time you gave us uh, that there are probably two ways. You are looking to acquire either one company domestically uh, for the data science or probably one company in the U.S. Yes. So that's what I said. One of these two is a U.S. company. The other one is an Indian company. Understood. And sir, one last question about the solution that you had implemented for the Bank of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. uh, and you had mentioned in our last conversation that uh, Microsoft liked that product and Probably there is a potential of that solution being taken by them and, you know, extended to some other Microsoft customers. Yes. So are we seeing something of that sort happening already? So the National Bank of Kenya is a result of that initiative. Ah, okay, great. And there are at least uh, two or three, three, there are three other banks. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Ritu, you want to, uh, you know, kind of. So Ritu is more directly involved with this, so I'm inviting her uh, to uh, share some information on that. Sure, thank you, sir. Yep. Yes, <laughs> Just to add to what Ajay just mentioned, so um, you might have noticed one of the slides that he spoke about, about our new product, Baffins, right? So Baffins is the result of the work we have done for a few banks earlier on the customer experience side. And we are working very closely with Microsoft, not just in one region, but uh, two regions, so the Africa and U.S. as well. Uh, to co-sell that solution in those geographies. Uh, National Bank of Kenya is a result of that effort where we will be implementing Baffins there. And then we have three more in the pipeline, uh, one in uh, Americas and two more in Africa as uh, we speak here. So that product uh, seems to be building some traction. Over to you. Thank you so much. Those were the only two questions. Thank you so much, sir. All the best. Thanks. Thanks We'll take the next question from Prachi, this, Prachi Doshi. Prachi, you can unmute and ask your questions. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, hello. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ajay, for the wonderful uh, results. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the small question that I have is what is our, uh, like, expected hiring rate and what are we targeting, uh, like, to hire in the next couple of quarters? And how are we doing the hiring? If you can give deep, like, what is in the freshers, what are on the senior levels, in which location. Yeah, something on that ledge. Thank you. So, thank you for asking that question. Uh, it might appear to be a very simple question, but uh, it has, its answer has a lot of impact on us. One thing 
which you might have noticed uh and uh, but not asked at least is that our head count in the last three quarters has not changed if you open up our presentation for the q4 of last year q1 of this year and now today's presentation which is q2 of this year you will see that our head count figure is roughly the same what does this mean our revenues have grown but we have worked to enhance our efficiencies and we have attempted to get more revenue from roughly the same head count which has resulted in a little bit higher profit and uh, which is and if, you know which is which shows that uh, the the overall efficiencies are growing but while i say this it's it's obvious that you can do this only up to a point you know and beyond that point you obviously need to add people one thing that we have continued to do and we will continue doing is hiring from campuses so we always take a batch every year sometimes twice a year uh, from campuses these are all bright people with uh, with with energy and aspirations we invest in training them uh, and in 6 months time sometimes less sometimes more they start uh, you know becoming part of our project teams so keeping a head count or having a certain number of people in the company is not a business target for us our business target is to grow the business by a certain percentage uh, try and improve that percentage and then make sure that we have enough people to fulfill that business because we are not i have mentioned this in our in a in couple of previous conversations we are not a typical it service company which generates a significant part of its revenue by resource augmentation by renting our people our solution our 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 revenue and our earnings come by providing solutions not by renting our people so there is no direct correlation if you may there will obviously be a broad correlation but no direct correlation to the number of people that we have and the revenue that we make we will attempt it's a i have mentioned that you know uh, it will not grow linearly so we will try to increase our revenues faster than the number of headcount that grows with us having said that we will uh, again uh, you know have the another batch of trainees being taken in from the campus uh, uh, when will that be ritu next that is the we will start in january okay so we will have a new batch starting from sometime january february uh, and then typically we sometimes we do twice a year uh, depending on how big a batch that we have taken there will be obviously some lateral hiring that we'll keep doing from time to time and that's an ongoing process but we are very conscious of the cost of resources and don't uh, you know keep uh, hiring a certain number of people uh, as a business target got it got it yeah thanks thanks for the detailed answer and yeah uh, the follow up was the, the 350 count that is constant is it due to the attrition and hiring that mm, was constant if yes then what is the attrition rate approximate yeah yeah i will i will respond to that <clears throat> so if you so there are two figures that i have on attrition if you look at the the total attrition figure okay because you know sometimes you know you want to give people a respectable exit rather than firing them okay but you have to keep looking at efficiencies of people one thing that covid has done one one bad thing that covid has done is that it has reduced the opportunities to have connect with people so the emotional connect that we used to build earlier right it has become harder so the two figures that i want to give you is if you look at our overall attrition last year this attrition figure last year was 22% however if i look at only the people who were not not trainees or people 
who had spent less than one year. Okay, if I discount them, then the number of people who had spent one year or more in the organization, the attrition number of that category was only 6%. But, yeah, 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 that, that was helpful. Yes. Uh, yeah. Numbers, the two numbers are, 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 are so, uh, you know, uh, widely separate that this, this tells you what's going on. Yep, yep, yep. I, I agree. Yeah, got it. Okay, okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, that is all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Ajay, for the really? answer. Uh, yeah, anything if you want to comment on your work from home strategy, uh, if the time permits, that would be helpful. Well, yeah. there is no strategy. I mean, we have a work from home available for everyone. Uh, there is no compulsion for anyone to come to office, but every day if you come to office, there will always be, uh, you know, sometimes uh, 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30, 40 people working from office. But because we have now people from literally Kashmir to Kerala uh, and, and, and from Rajasthan over to West Bengal, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's becoming a little impractical to tell people that you have to come to office. Okay. People are getting, people are doing their work. The only one concern that we have is that we are not able to impart as intense and as personal trainings as we used to do earlier. But we are looking at ways to improving that. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So what I understood is we will continue our work from home for a longer period of time. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Doshi. We'll take the next question from Vinay Alori. Vinay, you can unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, I congratulate for the all, uh, no, record-breaking quarter. And it's a very good quarter numbers to see. My question was around uh, we this my, last Microsoft uh, results and we see uh, their cloud business is growing along with Oracle Cloud with you know when they have because they have a arrangement with the Oracle Cloud so their apps and then Microsoft apps are collaborating and then giving the business so uh, when it comes to our uh, company is there any strategy to work on Oracle Cloud applications also to give any you know product develop products over there is just Focusing on the Microsoft alone right now. Okay. See, we have to first, you know, to, not to put, so we have to put the horse before the cart. And to do that, we have to see that what is it that we are trying to accomplish, right? We are not trying to accomplish to say that how much of Oracle Cloud do we sell on top of Microsoft Cloud. We are trying to accomplish that how do we meet the business objectives of our customers, right? It is not our objective to see that whether we sell more of one ERP or the other ERP. Our, yeah, our, our business objective is to see that did we serve our customers and help them achieve their objectives of business. Okay. So in pursuance of that, it doesn't matter what relationships is Microsoft, you know, getting into. Uh, of course, there is relationship between Microsoft and Oracle. There is also relationship between Microsoft and SAP, for example. One of the largest businesses that uh, Microsoft has on Azure is running SAP on Azure. Correct. Okay. So, but these things do not uh, distract us from what we are doing because we are not we are not just a you know a license pushing company. We are a okay. solutions company. We use a set of products for building our solutions. We have chosen to build them on Microsoft, and Microsoft is doing well. We have no reason to uh, see that, uh, you know, uh, do we need to reassess our choices. But then there always will be some areas, and I have mentioned in the past, for example, the area of digital commerce is one where some of our customers, for example, use products like a Magento or a Shopify uh, or some other products, right? So, just because they are not Microsoft products does not mean that we will not use those products. We we service and we support and provide solutions on those products to some of our customers. But when it comes to cloud, I think Azure has almost everything that we can ask for right now. Uh, you know, we are not saying that we will remain wedded to it for the rest of our life. But hey, you know, there is no reason for us to to just change something for the heck of it. 
Got it. Yeah, that's uh, that's thank thank you for the info. That's all I have. Um, Thanks, Vinay. Uh, I have a question on chat from Abhishek Sharda. His first question is: uh, Any revenue growth guidance for the next two to three years, both organic and inorganic? Well, the first thing which I would like to say is that at the moment we we definitely uh, uh, you know uh, I don't know if fire is the right word, but we are fairly determined uh, to keep pushing for the remaining two quarters of this year. Uh, you know the way we have we have done right now. uh if we keep doing it i think the years to come by will only be better uh i'm 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 not a gambler so i don't want to uh you know just throw a dice uh, and, and say something but we will continue to push harder than we have done in the past which would definitely push the organization uh farther uh and and uh, hopefully uh you know with more velocity uh inorganic again we are working on it uh you know unless we actually you know sign up something it's difficult for us to say anything but you know the moment anything fructifies on that front uh, our shareholders investors would be the first community who would get to know about it it's an important initiative for us uh, and we continue to work on it this next question is our margins have significantly improved in this quarter can we expect similar margins for coming quarters or do you expect it to improve from these levels as well okay so several points there uh, can they will they improve or can they improve from these levels yeah of course they can improve from this level uh, you know as our international business component rises these numbers will get better that's point number 1 uh, the point number 2 is that what has led to improvement in this quarter there are several factors one factor as i mentioned is uh, we have been able to achieve some efficiency gains okay i uh, as i already said that you cannot expect these efficiency gains to continue uh, you know uh, perpetually uh, because we will need to bring in some new people and some of those people could be expensive so in our type of organization it always happens you have a set of resources you try to maximize the outcome from that but at point at a certain point you will have to then prepare yourself for the next stage of growth for which you will need to make more investment bring in more people who will help you to grow to the next stage so it is possible that for some period you might certainly see that the you know the the, the people cost has gone up uh, but then that is what will result uh, into a gain uh, subsequently so you have to you have to keep moving a little bit like that uh we definitely target to have better margins uh, but will those better margins come next quarter i don't know uh you know we will keep pushing for it uh, but overall if you ask me that in 3 years time definitely uh, our our margins will be much better than what we see them today the other question is you mentioned geographical mix for services how much is services of total revenue how much is services of the total revenue yeah sure so if you look at the total our uh, i will tell you so our overall if you look at our h1 uh our uh, our 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 services are about 50 uh, 58% and our product is 42% okay uh his last question is q2 is our seasonally weakest quarter and q1 the best quarter q2 has shown very good performance over q1 what factors have driven this growth sure so if you look at you know if if we go to the details actually the product revenue in q2 uh is slightly lower than the product revenue in q1 uh to share with you the numbers our product revenue in q2 declined quarter on quarter by 4.7% uh even though year on year it grew by 68.6% but we did better on the services side our services quarter on quarter improved by 16.6% and year on year 
they improved by 40.8 percent. So better, you know, uh, traction with customers. Uh, and see, the other thing which I want to say, while while you know everything looks rosy and it is for sure, and we will keep making it better. But we also have to see that uh, in our business, many projects are milestone-based projects. So some of the things will uh, can sometimes also appear, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, biased a little bit if you had milestone projects which finished at a certain period of time. But, you know, none of the milestone projects would also have more than maybe 20% attached to the last milestone. So it may have some impact, but, but not a whole lot. But it's a little bit, you know, it, it, it is a contribution of a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, uh, which together then gives you a total outcome. Uh, you know, more customers, better engagement, the whole momentum of digital transformation, uh, better, uh, I would say, uh, productivity from people. So all of these things have combined. Uh, we now have a higher service basket. You know, uh, over the last uh, at least year, year and a half, uh, you know, we have now more opportunities on the data engineering side. Uh, we have some more opportunities uh, on, on, on in, in few other geographies. So all of these have enabled us to make this Q2, uh, you know, better than Q1. And you are right, that's not something uh, which we saw in the last many years. It's a good sign. Right. Uh, we'll take the next question from the line of Varun Agarwal. Varun, you can unmute and ask your questions. Thank you for the opportunity, Vinay. Congratulations, Ajayji and team, for the wonderful set of numbers. Now that you have appointed the Canadian uh, head of operations, can you tell me a little more about our plans to grow the business there? Canada is a very important geography for us. Uh, I can think of at least two customers that we have in Canada, uh, you know, who are a billion dollar company. Uh, so our business momentum continues there, and that's the reason that we decided uh, to strengthen uh, that business. Uh, so you know, you uh, you saw him in the picture that we had in the in the exhibition. Uh, uh, he's a local Canadian, has been in the in the in the segment for many years. So we will continue to push with uh, our set of offerings, which are across the business application side, ERP and CRM the data side, the Azure side, uh, it's an important market and uh, we continue to put significant emphasis on that along with the U.S. market. Okay, thank you and all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks, Varun. Uh, I have a question on chat from Maruti Nandan Sada. What's our long-term vision in terms of growth for next five years? Can we take our company to 1,000 crore top line and how would we be able to do that? Uh, well, all suggestions from you or anybody else are welcome uh, in, in in that pursuit. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, but but more seriously, uh, definitely. I mean, but there are broadly two areas from which the growth comes. One is organic, with what you are currently doing and the new things that you add for doing, and then the other is inorganic. If you cut it across a different dimension then it will be different geographies. So when you do more offerings uh, in a certain geography, you get more wallet share from your customers. When you expand geographically, you get a new segment of customers. When you do inorganic growth, you have a new arm added to your overall operation. So these are the things which will keep, uh, we, we will keep working on. Uh, and uh, while we do this, we have to make sure that we also maintain a healthy balance of everything else. You know, be profitability, be it customer success, customer satisfaction. You know, we don't. We, you know, it it would no, it would make nobody happy if our revenue was to increase uh, to a thousand crores, but if we are not making enough money, uh, you know, at, on the bottom line, or if our customers are not happy. So we have to do all of these things. But absolutely, you know, when you when you create institutions like this, the institutions have a life and they have. Which is, which is far beyond individuals. And when you move like that, the organization will for sure reach uh, a stage where it will cross a thousand crores or even more. Why not? 
Hello, sir. Uh, there is a follow-up question in the chat from Abhishek Shada. Can you give operating margins for services and products separately? Uh, I can, but you know, we just put all these you know numbers together. Uh, you know, just in the last couple of days, I may not have that number ready with me right now, but I can tell you. I mean, I may not have a number ready to the uh, accuracy of uh, you know a decimal or or the last digit, but broadly speaking uh you know as we have mentioned uh, in the in the past also our domestic services give us a margin of approximately 23 to 25% our international services give us a margin of approximately 50% and our product gives us a margin of somewhere between 18 to 20% and his second question is going forward services revenue contribution will increase gradually is the understanding correct the services contribution will increase with the increase of our international business because our margins in that business are significantly higher than the margins from uh, our uh, domestic services. But while we say this, I must also, because somebody may say, then why are we doing the domestic business? So it's important for us to also understand that the, the product business in India today is significantly larger than the product business that we have in the international market. So the two businesses together are not exactly, but roughly the same, not much difference. So we have to keep pushing on both, uh, both fronts. We have to keep pushing paddle on both fronts. Uh, India is the fastest growing economy in the world. The next couple of years are going to be game changers there. We have seen India business growing pretty rapidly in the last two years, even for us. Uh, but for the overall, uh, so we build our solutions there. We 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 gain experience here. Uh, we 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 our our products get uh, you know into the market faster here. So that is what makes it the critical part of our operation. And then we have this push on the international side where we have a higher margin, which keeps the overall operation healthy. Uh, we'll take the next question from the line of Puran Singh Sajdev. Uh, you can go ahead and ask the question. Puran, you can unmute and ask your questions. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Firstly, congratulations, Ajay, uh, for the wonderful results. So, so my question is that uh, probably I actually I got disconnected. So not sure if, uh, you know, from repeating the question. So, so the question is around if, you know, if in, in case, like if we have the slowdown coming in future, you know, in next couple of months, which we are anticipating or, you know, it, or increases the inflation, then what are our plans, you know, to, to tackle with it? Yeah, sure. So, you see, if there's an earthquake, everybody will get impacted. Okay. Similarly, if there is a slowdown, everybody will get impacted. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to mitigate the impact of that to say that the impact on us will be uh, probably less uh, than what it will be for for many other many other organizations. Uh, you know, and to do that. The, the few things that help us is our basket of offerings is very complementary to each other. Even when there's a slowdown, businesses still need to do what they need to do. And these businesses then start looking at, uh, you know, low cost, uh, uh, I would say, uh, sources for getting their work done. So that is one part of it. So if there is a slowdown happening in some part of the world, chances are that they will look for other places like India uh, for that. That could be an opportunity for us. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, you know, slowdown is unlikely to happen in the entire world at the same time. If you look at our whole customer base, you know, covering the U.S. and Canada, uh, both regions, and then doing a reasonable growth in Africa, uh, India, and APAC. So we have had customers in 30-plus countries. So working across these geographies, working across these customers, uh, sometimes a certain industry faces a slowdown. For example, during COVID, the whole travel industry faced a slowdown. 
but then we work across a set of industry you know we have solutions for uh, eight to ten industries uh, so that is again what helps us in tiding over so when the travel industry comes down maybe the education is going up uh, if if one geography goes down maybe the other geography is going up so all of these things together enable us uh, to to provide a cushion uh, for uh, you know any untoward situation on the financial front uh, worldwide all right thank you thank you thanks pulan uh, we'll take next question in the chat from shiv shankar khanna uh so congratulations and thanks for providing an opportunity to see you face to face does our company have plans to create our own software solutions okay i will let rajiv do that okay i'll take a short break and let rajiv handle that yeah so we already are creating solutions which are our own ip one is in the in the area of education another like ritu mentioned in the banking we have in the renewable energy space so these are the areas where we have already built our solution and we have customers these solutions are accepted they are also published on microsoft you know app source so they are on the marketplace and with these solutions now we are actually getting to the maturity stage where they, we have the customers in india and now we are looking for the market outside india also so there's a huge potential and as ajay mentioned in his slide we are now going to create and bring intelligence into each of our solution so while microsoft will release the generic you know ai technology we'll be creating and releasing the industry specific copilots so just to give you an example let's say if we are in the education there will be specific copilot for students another copilot for the faculty which will be our product on the microsoft technology base so we are also going to increase our ip revenue because of the advent and infusion of the ai into our existing solutions we will take the next question on the chat from prasanjit paul do you have any timelines in mind for the acquisition what kind of inorganic additional revenue we are looking at from the acquisition uh so if you ask me timelines i would want it yesterday but uh at the same time uh as we have been mentioning that we don't want to be rash and take uh you know decisions which uh we are not uh really sure about that does not mean that we are afraid of taking risks we are not but we are also responsible for some basic due diligence now this takes time i would say that my expectation is by this time next year we would definitely have succeeded uh, you know largely but it could happen earlier you know i'm just saying a time frame uh, uh, which uh, uh, at least is uh, uh, i would say doesn't appear uh, too soon for you to make uh, uh, any any forecasts on that basis but it's an important uh, initiative for us we are working on it uh, we will let our investors and um, uh, you know our shareholders know about it as uh, anything any development happens on that there is a question uh, in the chat uh from mr vn his name is abbreviated his full name is vivek uh kindly share the split in revenue percentage for india and global also between product and services revenue in a quadrant matrix also what is the growth trajectory percentage across these four buckets okay uh all right so overall if you say india versus international uh in quarter 2 india was 53% overall international was 47% overall on the product side in quarter 2 india was 76% international was 24% on the services side india was 36% and international was 64% uh the 
did i miss uh, some part of the question no, i think you've answered the question okay anybody else who wishes to ask a question may use the option of raise hand he would like to know the same person would like to know what is the growth trajectory across these four buckets i would say for the sake of simplicity uh, consider that we definitely are pushing to have at least the same growth as we have done in the past you know we continue to try various means of increasing the growth uh, but i would say that uh, the minimum that we expect us to do is what we have done in the past i said the same last quarter right and then we ended up having this quarter at least a little bit better than last quarter uh, i would again say the same thing because uh, you know we we will always continue to push as much uh, as is feasible and as much as we can uh, but uh, uh, this is what we expect uh, us to do at least right so since there are no further questions would you like to give any closing comments before we end this call yeah absolutely so uh, of course you know I, i i thank all of you for the confidence that you have exhibited in the organization uh, uh, you know it has you know your confidence gives us the confidence to keep pushing the pedal further uh, it, it's been a great three months period where we have seen market perception about us change a little bit and we will work for uh, just making sure that the confidence that you have reposed in us we do everything Uh, to keep strengthening that right sir thank you so much and thank you to the management team for joining us on this call and thank you to all the participants for joining us on the call this brings us to the end of this conference call you may all log out thank you